how do we create speed? There's two key parts and we're gonna talk about it in this video, so check it out. Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson. In today's video, we are part three of our Rotational Shot Put 101 series. And one of the things we've been looking at is kind of introducing you to the throw, understanding you have to have a structure. The first video, we started to look at the entry side. Now we're gonna look at that thing everybody wants. You wanna have that speed. How do you create speed into the middle? And one of the key things is if you messed up that entry, you're, you're gonna be toast. You're gonna fall into the throw and you can't create speed when you're falling off balance. So you have to come into that throw on balance. So we're comparing our throwers one through four member thrower number one 10 year old first day throwing so the movement is very good for the first day and as this athlete continues to go on and apply the six pillars he should continue to have more and more success when we look at again and we compare and we kind of review and we're staying nice and long and we're getting that foot now right here is the drop-in so let's just focus on thrower number one you're gonna see what we call is our pillar three is we have to drop into the throw so sometimes there's a drop right we we don't want to drop. We don't want to turn in place. We want to drive into the ring. So we're rotating and turning and dropping in. And if you don't drop into the throw, you're going to fall, right? And that's what we don't want to have. We, we're going to fall in the throw too, in the rotational throws. If you don't have the axis set up on the entry and drop it into the throw, the hip falls to the side. You're basically trying to turn and you're falling into the throw. And that is going to put you off balance. And it's, then you're going to be decelerating. You can't increase your speed. So if you apply speed even when you're falling can you kind of potentially salvage that right but it's a salvage it's not an optimization of your technical positions therefore you're going to be losing distance so when we look at thrower number one and we see him he's dropping here you're gonna see that nice little turn right there you see that knee kind of hinge and now he's just past nine and he's pushing that knee in so he's moving everything into the direction of the throw you're seeing this right now the thing that this thrower is gonna be learning in is back in our entry we didn't talk a whole lot about the sweep leg we just talked about kind of the position of where it comes up but we are going to be learning how to keep this leg active and open and we keep those knees at and so right here is where you set in and you kind of create that wide sweep so again this athlete's been throwing for literally a matter of hours you got a pretty nice position he's not entirely sure how to use that left side yet so you notice his left arm's a little bent a little early but he's got a pretty good sweep it goes a little narrow but again for day one right this is really really good movement and you're going to notice right here here that that foot keeps moving and so he's not quite over rotating he's pushing and his hips are moving which is real good so what we're gonna be doing is coming into pillar three we drop in we're creating speed now what are we gonna do we don't want to just keep blowing past the middle we've got to get this guy he's got to wrap in his arm so that's where you see kind of this arm come in here and you want to see that you see the right side and the left side kind of come together so that you can accelerate rotation and then you're gonna come open long again you're gonna see how this arm comes out. We've always talked about creating that long path and position and that's going to be key so as the thrower comes through he can keep turning but he's again coming off of being a glider so he's used to kind of pushing instead of rotating all the way through and getting that side so he can push behind it. So now if you just kind of back it up a little bit and we're going to kind of connect how that dropping in and applying speed and the rewrap affects that length through the finish right you see that. Again when we look here what's going to be the key is do we push the knee we have to be driving in and this is where we talk about that if the upper body opens too much you're creating rotational speed you're going to be just rotating in place and you're not going to be driving in so it's a combination of creating an angular rotational linear position right and that's why this is tricky because you have to learn how all that puts together and so when we look at thrower number four you're going to see how he's going to come around you're going to see how the lower body is really moving this way he's got a nice left foot he's got a nice sweep leg path is starting to be established and you're going to see how that leg kind of comes up and then he's out here nice and wide and you're going to see how he kind of opens this around now if you looked at best male throwers in the world you've looked at joe kovacs tom walsh ryan krauser darlin romani when you look at those four guys each of them are doing essentially the same sort of mechanics there's some key nuances differences walsh and krauser and kovacs and romani they're all going to stop that arm and they're going to do what we're showing you here in this pillar four position so when you watch this and you drop in you see like this this throw number four you're going to see how he creates that re 
rewrap right there. And so what we're looking for with the rewrap is we want to create this nice vertical axis. And the closer this shoulder can be to this line, the more torqued up the upper body. Now, when I say that, we're never trying to keep the upper body or the shot back. We've always taught rotate the right side around into the left side. And so we're creating this line between the two sides. And that's the key. We're not trying to hold the shot back. We're trying to accelerate. So we're bringing the left side and the right side together to create faster acceleration. So when we look here, like this is again our thrower in week one, thrower number two, you notice he does he does a pretty good job of creating his rewrap, right? He's got everything out and that's gonna allow him to come over here. And then he kind of pulls that shoulder around a little cause he's been used to being a glider, but a pretty nice position. And then you're gonna notice thrower number three, same thing right here. You can see when we put him in position and we go right here, you're gonna notice that his shoulder is actually kind of the furthest away, right? We wanna be more in this position. So by the time we're there, so when we get it and we get that left arm here, you're gonna see how it's opening just a touch. So this is gonna be uh, factors that are related to what are we doing? We're dropping in and how are we attacking the throw? So thrower number three, he's got his chest open a little too much to the throw. And so therefore it's gonna pull him into the throw and it's gonna create a little bit of shift to come through. So here's the thing that we're gonna focus on. We are trying to teach how do we move the sweep leg in our pillar three and how do we have? So if we have everything lengthened, we're gonna feel the long path. The left arm goes short, the sweep leg tends to go short. So let's look at thrower number two real quick. And so you're gonna see he's got a pretty good long path and then the upper body starts to follow the arm a little too much whereas if you look at throwers two three and four together right watch watch um, when we go back and we look at three so see how we're all basically at this point here and now watch two his upper body starts to lead whereas you notice three and four are continuing the long path and they're not allowing the shoulders to turn they're turning the arm and this is a really important cue for you guys so as you do that now how are we going to do that and how are we going to break that down this is where again inside the throwing chain reaction we go through this in detail and we really break down specific drills and we start putting it together in pieces and we put it back together in what we call pillar connection and then we apply it to our throwing and we're always being able to find the individual areas that need the most attention your throw is going to be the result of your weakest link and so if you can get all of your links in your chain nice and strong your throw is going to become really good and then you're going to be working on elite level stuff before you you know it. Today's video, we are covering part four of our rotational shot put 101, right? So one of the things that we showed here, and I thought it was really good to go through showing a beginner, right? We've got our thrower number one, who's day one. We've got thrower number two, who's in week one of the rotational shot. He's been throwing for multiple years, but he made the switch. And a lot of you guys are going to be in that situation. Thrower number three and thrower number four are multiple years, and they've been getting into more and more details or more comfortable. They're past thrower number one's phase right and for that matter past thrower number two so today what we we want to review that we've obviously gone through the entire throw we have explained that thrower number one when we look at the speed of thrower number one he's taken just over two seconds thrower number four is taken just under a second and a half that's the thing by the time that shot's done to out of your hand now we're in our pillar five and this is where you're going to see and this is where i'm very impressed with thrower number one it says a lot about the athlete but it says a lot about what we're teaching at our events and how we're going through the process. So this athlete had gone through our biggest update on our throwing chain reaction. So if you've been to a 2019 camp, we kind of shuffled things around, put it together. And so what you're seeing, what we had set up for 2020 was this more integrated mix where you're getting to a lot of things and you're moving through and you're actually learning and understanding the connection and how the system works on a better standpoint. So here's a perfect example. Again, first day rotational thrower, 10 years old, and there's some really great positions here. So when we get to this power position, this is one of the things we want to do. We want to be on the ball this foot and you're going to notice that all of our throwers are there and you're going to see that knee pushing out and you're going to see here's our 70 foot thrower. You're going to notice he's got the longest strike path. So again, one of the things that we discussed was we have to get the lower body and the feet. So we have the legs and the foot position. So we're going to understand how those things put together sequentially. And then we have the trunk, right? And we refer to the upper body. So our, we look at our center of mass and we look at the path of the arms as we're going to come through. And again, if we have a short, a short, short path or if we have a long 
wrong path, and that's going to be the key. So the key that we talk about in pillar five, right? This is the beginning of the power position. So we want to come out of the throw. So we're going to go here, and you're going to notice we're going to open. The arm is coming, opening out, because we want to stay as long as possible through the finish. And that's what our throwers are learning to do. So look at thrower number one. He does a great job of really staying long. Thrower number two is shortening that just a little bit. Pretty good path. Thrower number three is doing a pretty good job as well. You're going to see that, and but you're going to really notice the length on four and number one and number three. He's pulling it in a little bit, but if you looked at our other videos, we kind of explained what's going on in his chain reaction and why he's going to wind up pulling it ahead a little bit earlier. The thing that we're going to do is as we move here, this is what we set up. We set up the right side to be moving around. Okay, we stay on the ball of the foot. We take the left side nice and long and out. We're not smashing it yet because we're getting the body set up to hit what we refer to as our pillar six. And that's where you can see we want to stay on it and come around. And that's that long path that leads you into the throw. So you're noticing that when you see this, you see the block arm stop. See how the block arm stops? Again, block arm's nice stop on the young guy. Again, but he's kind of pulling down, and that's where you're going to see his elbow is going to kind of drop, and he's going to lose a little bit of strike. And then you're going to see thrower number three pretty good, but he's kind of pulling off, and he's hitting it like this instead of being able to come around and chase the shot out, which is where you're going to see how that all squares up, and you're going to see how we get this position as we go through. So here we go. So you can see that. Look at the extension. So you're going to notice the extension with our most advanced thrower. Pretty nice extension here on number two. Again, good extension here, but you're going to notice how he pulled around. He's not. He's day one. He doesn't know how to hit the finish quite yet. And then you're going to see thrower number three. A little too much jumping. He kind of pulled off of it, and he didn't allow himself to come around. Again, we're more proponents of what you see the best guys in the world doing, and that's kind of what we teach the movement. We don't know exactly what they're saying, but <laughs> we're teaching the same sort of patterns to kind of create the same types of finishes that you're seeing with these throwers. So let's clear out all the lines. As we look, the one thing you're going to notice in common with all of our throwers is you're going to see this nice long counterbalance. And again, you notice our day one thrower turning around 20 25 feet. So we got thrower number two who's been throwing about roughly a week. And truthfully, this was about maybe his third training session. So this guy was absolutely tapped, but you can see how much better he was moving just in a matter of a handful of hours, right? Four or five hours, and it's it's a huge difference. Now remember, four or five hours, that's a lot of throwing, a lot of training, a lot of really specific work, and that's where the throwing chain reaction system comes in. Like I said, we got the link below. Check that out because the idea here is what we want to do is show you, you need to understand the direction. That's first and foremost. If you don't understand what you're trying to accomplish from a technical standpoint, you're going to be out there working on God knows what, and it's going to be an inefficient use of your time. This is a perfect example. Thrower number one, one day, multiple hours, hitting great positions. Now, what are we trying to do? You see that his foot's a little low, but look at how nice the, the, the left arm, the block arm is. He's opening this foot up. He's got his knees loaded up. Everything's working. I mean, that's a really great position for a day one thrower, and he's 10 years old. He's got to stick to the principles that we talked about in the first videos on how do we set up like our pillar one and two, pillar three, four, which is enabling this pillar five, six. So as everything stops, now we're into pillar six. He's going to be able to start engaging the block side. You can notice we don't see that block arm yet. Now we see it. It's stopping. He's pushing. He's a young guy. Look at that position. Really great. And again, look at our, our week one thrower, right? Same thing. You see him coming through. You're starting to see blocks just a little late. He's not used to it yet. There's no timing yet. He's been traditionally a glider. Kind of hit this plateau with the glide, which is going to be real common. Now he's throwing as far in a matter of a few sessions with his rotational shot that he was with his glide. And that's that's a huge sign that he's absolutely going to be throwing much further. Now, thrower number three and four, you can see, have the best positions. Thrower number four, again, one of the best all-time high school throwers in the U.S., 22 meters. You can see how he squared up elbow in position shot great block arm hips coming through and thrower number three what you guys don't know is I because I coach him I see where are strength deficits and that's where you can see some issues and you can see how he's 
pulling away, he's jumping and pulling away. And what we're gonna do is that's gonna be largely due to some reaction to strength. While he's setting up some good positions, there's some technical, there's some strength issues that are inhibiting his ability to move efficiently. And that's one of the key things we want you to do. So big summary, again, when we guys take it back and we look, we set up pillar one, there's very specific action. You're gonna notice different actions here. I really like what day one, again, day one thrower, as I mentioned before, he's a perfect example of the updates in the system. And so you're as good as what you focus on. Here's this guy, this is the first time he's ever done it and he's hitting great position. So I really like the setup and the rhythm and he's coming here. What you don't know about pillar thrower number three is that he came from kind of a different technical model. We've retrained that and it's more efficient and he's doing a lot of really good things and I think he's gonna have a really big year coming up. Looking at thrower number two, you can see of all the throwers, he's going too fast with the upper body in and it's following the shoulder and that's what's creating some of his technical issues. So we're looking as we go to pillar two, three, so it kind of shortens up. He gets a pretty good rewrap. Throwers one, three, and four. You're gonna again notice that. Notice the rewrap on thrower four. Again, he liked to style-wise, he liked to have the arm low. So you see throwers like uh, Darlin Romani likes that. You see Krauser's up a little higher. Kovacs is higher. Walsh tends to be lower. So again, this is gonna be some style things that you're gonna see. And that's what you have to ultimately do. And that's what our system allows you to do is to find the best things that are gonna work in terms of what are the biomechanics and the physics say that we need to do. That's what the throwing chain reaction is all about. We're showing you how do we create those positions? How do we connect those positions? That's what we call pillar connection. And that's how, how we facilitate the chain reaction. Hopefully you guys found this helpful. You can see how all those things yield and set up these final big throws. That's the goal. Again, if you guys are uh, unfamiliar, be sure to check out the Throwing Chain Reaction system. Click the link, visit our site. We go step by step on how to teach you the right things. So we've been able to help our coaches to help thousands of athletes throw further. So be sure to like, hit that subscribe button, share this video, comment below on anything you'd like to see in the future, and we will see you on the next video.